Let's continue our exploration of FastAPI and look at how to handle the request body that's submitted in a post request. And this is a very common use case. Our APIs often need to create new resources on the back end and then store those in a database. So let's see how to use FastAPI to create an endpoint that takes a post request and also how to integrate the data coming into that endpoint with Pydantic. Let's get started. Now I've got a page here open on the FastAPI documentation for the request body. I'm going to link this below the video and let's have a very quick look at what it says here. When you need to send data from a client and let's say that's coming from a browser to your API, you will send that as a request body and that body can be something like JSON data or it could be form data. FastAPI will allow you to handle both of those types of incoming data. So you have the distinction here of a request body which is sent from the client to our FastAPI server and then also a response body and that's the data that's sent back to the client from the endpoint. Now to declare our request body, we're going to use Pydantic models. So let's get started now. If we look at the application we've been building, we have the schemas.py file and you can see that we have two models here. We have an album model and we have the band model. And the band is the parent in that relationship. A band will consist of zero or more albums. Now our client might want to create a new band in the database. So we need to allow them to do that via a post request and create an endpoint for that. Now we're going to refactor the schemas that we have here because when we send a post request, we're not going to send the ID for the new band. That's something that's going to be determined on the back end, typically by the database. And we'll see that later on when we integrate FastAPI with a database. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to refactor the schemas.py file to start with. So instead of a band model, I'm going to create a band base model. And that's going to inherit from the base model. And that's going to contain all of the common fields that we need in the model. So we're going to get rid of the ID here. We're going to keep the name, the genre and the albums. And then we're going to create two more classes below that. The first one is going to be a band create model. And this one is going to inherit from the band base that we've got above here. So this base model here, you can think of that as almost like an abstract class. It contains the common fields and we're never going to create this in the application, but we are going to reference the subclasses of that. So we're going to create this band create class that inherits from that. And we don't need any more fields here. So we're just going to pass on that. And then we can create another class below that with the name band with ID. And actually I'm going to capitalize ID here. And again, that's going to inherit from band base. And this time we define an extra field, the ID field, which is going to be an integer. So now instead of a single model with all of the fields, we have three models and this allows us to get a bit more flexible with the data schema and we don't need to pack everything into a single model. Now we need to go back to main.py and we need to refactor this. So from schemas, we're going to import all of these band base, band create and band with ID. Now, before we go on here, if you're wondering where this pattern comes from, I'm going to link to this GitHub repository below the video. This is created by the guy that made FastAPI and it's kind of an example full stack application that uses FastAPI and Postgres. Now you can see we have some Pydantic models here. We have a user base model that contains the shared properties that are going to be inherited by all of the other classes. And then we have a user create model that inherits from that model and defines the extra fields that are needed on the creation of a new user. And also it has that ID field at the bottom here. And it also contains some other models that have the ID field as well. So this kind of base class model here that can contain the shared properties. And that's exactly what we've done with our very simple band base schema. And then we define the classes that inherit from that. Now back to main.py, let's refactor this. We have an endpoint that's returning all of the bands. So instead of band here, we're going to return band with ID and we need to change all of the references here. And similarly for the endpoint containing the single band by its ID, we need to return that band with an ID and refactor all of those references again. Now we have another endpoint here. We don't need to touch that one. What we're going to do now is we're going to define a new endpoint and that's going to take this app object, but instead of a get request, it's going to be a post request. So let's go to the bottom of the file. And we're going to define a new decorator here and it's going to be app.post. Now the endpoint is going to be slash bands and this is the same path that we have in the band list page here but instead of a get request it's a post request. So when the user or when the client sends a post request it's going to hit the function that we're about to define here. So let's create a function async def create band and that is going to take the request body as a parameter. So let's call the request body band data and we're going to give it a type here of that band create model. 
So what we're saying here is that we expect the client to send the data that conforms to that model band create. So if we look at that model, that just inherits from band base and doesn't define any more fields. So we expect the client to send the name, the genre, and optionally some albums. And if they don't send any albums, it's gonna to default to the empty list. So in order to type in the request body that's coming from the client, we can just define that parameter in our handler function and give it the correct Pydantic type. And then Pydantic and FastAPI is smart enough to actually extract that from the request body and create the model for us for our use in this function. Now, interestingly, when we actually create the band, what we're gonna return is we're gonna return the band with the ID. So we're going to generate the ID in this function and then return the entire bandwidth ID model that contains not only the fields that have been submitted from the client, but also the auto generate ID. So let's get started with writing the logic of this function. We're going to get the ID simply by looking at this hard-coded list. We're going to get the last element and increment that by one. So let's create an ID here. It's going to be bands and then we're going to index in at the very end of that list. That will give us the dictionary representing that band and we can then get the ID from that and add one. What we can then do is we can create a band here and what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to create a band with ID object and that can contain our auto generate ID and then we can dump the properties of the band data model that's been passed in and we can call the model dump function there in order to convert that to a dictionary and pass the resulting keys and values into the band with ID. So when we create the band with the ID we just pass the ID in and then we pass in all of the properties that have been sent from the client and verified and validated by Pydantic in order to create this model that we've called band data. Now we need to convert the band with ID to a Python dictionary and then append it to this list here. If we look at the bands list that we have, these are all dictionaries at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually call dot model dump on the resulting band with ID model. That's gonna give us back the dictionary and we can then append that to our hard coded list of bands. Now don't worry, later on this is all gonna get cleaned up and we're gonna use a database in order to generate these IDs and we're not gonna to have to worry about converting everything to dictionaries and so on. And the final thing to do here is just return the band that we have. This is a dictionary after we call model dump, but when we return that dictionary, it's gonna convert that to JSON and validate the schema based on the band with ID model. And that's the type hint for this return statement in the function. Now we're going to test this out now. And in order to do that, I'm going to install an extension on VS Code. So there's an extension that allows you to perform API requests in VS Code and it's called REST Client. So let's install that just now. And as this says here, REST Client will allow you to send HTTP requests and view the response in Visual Studio Code directly. So let's go back to our file here, our main.py file. And actually on the left hand side, we're going to create a new file and I'm gonna call this api.http. Now if we give the file that we create here a .http extension, we can then use that file with the REST client. And within this file, all we need to do is define our HTTP request. So we're gonna send a post request in order to test this, and it's gonna to be to localhost 8000 slash bands. And this endpoint will then send the request to this function here because it's a post request and it matches the root that we have here. Now, as well as the endpoint, we also want to give it a bit more information. We're gonna say that we are going to send JSON data, and then we can define the body of that data. So I'm going to add some data here. We're going to give the band a name of Boards of Canada and a genre of electronic. Now, how do we send the request with this client? I'm going to get rid of the sidebar and you can see just above where we define the API request, there is this text here that says send request. This is defined by the REST client. If we click that, we're going to be able to send the request. But of course, before we do that, we need to actually start the server. So at the bottom here, I have the virtual environment with FastAPI installed. We're going to run Uvicorn main app and we can pass dash dash reload into that. That's gonna start the server on port 8000, and you can see in our API function, that's the port that we're using. We can then test this out. So we're gonna hit send request here, and we get back the data for our new band. And you can see it contains the newly generated ID for that band, and all of the data that we actually sent is being sent back to us here as well. So that post request should have added the new band to our list. So we're gonna define another request here, so we can put three of these hashes and then we can define a get request. And again, it's gonna to be to localhost 8000 slash bands. So when we send a get request here, it's gonna return the list of all of the bands. So let's hit send request and we get back this list and it contains 
the new band that we just added. So that is all working fine. Of course, later on when we send the post request, it's gonna send that data into the database. But for now, this is exactly what we want. And we can amend this get request. We could add a query parameter from the last video. So for example, we can limit this to only bands with the genre of electronic. When we send that request, we only get back two records now, Aphex Twin and Boards of Canada, which is the new band. Now, one final thing to show at the moment is that when we send the post request at the top here, we can also optionally send some albums. So I'm gonna add an albums key to the post data in this request body. And I'm gonna send a list of albums from Boards of Canada, Tomorrow's Harvest, and this one here, Music Has the Right to Children. So we're sending the albums along with the new band and we're sending two of those. So let's save api.http and let's send this request. And this time we get back the band with the ID of six and it contains some albums this time. So we can actually create the albums in place when we send that post data. And the reason for that, if we close this and go back to schemas.py, our band create model inherits from band base and the band base model contains these albums and that's a list of album models. We have the album model above here. So because this band create model is the one that actually validates the data in the post request, we can actually send these albums in that request. Let's now move on and we're gonna look at the API documentation that we have for this new post endpoint. So let's go back to the browser and we're gonna look at the API documentation and you can see the docs for our new endpoint. This time it's got the method of post and you can see some metadata here. It's got uh, the title of create band and that title is coming from the actual name that we give to the function. And if we inspect the documentation for this, we can see the example schema for the request body. Because we've used that band create pydantic model, the request body that the post request is expecting now has that structure and that is very useful for the clients that want to send new data to our API. They know the exact structure of that data now because of the Pydantic model. And if we scroll down, we can see the response schema and this time it contains the ID as well as the other fields that we had above. And again, that's because we've type hinted the return type from this fast API handler function as the bandwidth ID Pydantic model. So again, everything we're doing here with these Pydantic models Models is very well integrated into the API documentation that's provided by FastAPI. And this is all out of the box with no configuration. It's very useful when you're developing with FastAPI. So let's finish this video with an example of how we might limit the genre that we're sending here. Rather than accepting any string, we might want to limit that to a predefined list of genres. So let's go back to our application. We're gonna to go to schemas.py. Now we had this at the top, genre URL choices. And this was for the URL query parameters. And these are lowercase by default. What we're gonna do is basically just replicate this. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it just below. And we're gonna call this one genre choices. And I'm gonna uppercase these and I'll show you why in a second. We're gonna make them title case basically. And the reason for that is that these should match what we have in the data that we have in the hard coded list. So in the list we have the genre of music and that starts with a capital letter and it also has this for hip hop. So it's title case. So we're gonna use this new genre choices enum. So let's copy that. We're gonna use it in this band base model here that we are inheriting from below here. We're gonna use that to limit the genres that can be passed into the API. Now, just before we go on, I know this is kind of like repetition of code. There are different ways of doing this. But as long as you name things very clearly, this is obviously for the URL choices and the query parameters. And this one here is just the generic choices that we want to use in the hard-coded list or in the database that we're using behind the scenes. So we're gonna use genre choices. And what we're gonna do is reference that in the base model. So we don't need to define that twice. It's in the base model and it's gonna limit the possible genres to one of those that are defined in the enum. So let's see what effect this has had on our API. If we go back to api.http and go down to this get request, if we send that request, you can see we are getting an internal server error. And this is telling us that the genre choices object has no attribute lower. So let's go back to main.py and it's line 25. I'm gonna close this on the right hand side. So line 25 here, 
And the problem here is that the genre is now a field on the enum, so we can get the value of that by referencing dot value, and we can then save that and go back to api.http and resend that request, and we get back the data this time. Now, what's the benefit of using this enum here to limit the genres? Let's go back to api.http, and what I'm gonna do at the top here, I'm just gonna remove these albums for simplicity, and we're gonna define the genre as electronic and send this request again, and we get back the new record with the ID of five. And that works because electronic is a valid genre. Now, if we define that to something such as jazz that's not defined in that enum, we're going to get back an error here that the input is not being recognized. So this is very useful if you want to limit the data for a particular field that's being sent in a post request, and that can help you keep your database clean and stop your database being filled with random values. So it can be useful to define these enums for that. Now, one thing to note here, if we go back to the data that's being sent in this request body, I can go back to electronic, but if I make that all lowercase and we save this, when we send that request, we're getting back the same error. And this is gonna be the same if we send it in all uppercase. If we send that again, it's the same problem. Because we have the enum, the genre is only going to work with the value that we define here. So it's gonna only work with the title case. Now that's a problem, maybe the client will send data in lowercase or uppercase. But what we want to do is actually convert that to title case. How can we do that? What we can do to solve this is define what's called a pre-validator in Pydantic. So I'm gonna scroll down to the band create model that we have here. And this at the moment, it just inherits from band base and it doesn't do anything else. We're gonna get rid of that pass statement and we're gonna add a validator here. And the validator is going to convert the value for the genre that's being passed in to title case before the validations are run. Now, in order to do that at the top from Pydantic, we're gonna import the validator function and we can then go down to the band create model and we're going to define that validator using a validator decorator and we pass the field that we want to validate against and that's the genre field and in order to make this a pre-validator that's run before the normal validations we can pass pre equals true and this is very useful for performing any kind of transformation of data before the normal validation is run and that can help you in circumstances like this so let's define the function it's going to be called title case genre and a validator function in Pydantic is a class method. It takes the class and the value that's actually been passed in to the Pydantic model. And what we're gonna do is simply return the value, but we're gonna return it in title case. And as an example of what that's gonna do, it's gonna convert the value of rock. Imagine that had all lowercase characters. It's gonna convert that to this, and that would do the same if it was all uppercase or even if it was a mixture of characters. The end result after calling the title function is gonna be this output here. So let's remove this comment and save this file, and we're gonna try this again in our api.http file. So let's send the request, and this time we're sending the genre with all uppercase characters. So let's send that, and instead of the error, we're now getting back the new record. It has the ID of five, and if we look at the genre, you can see it's been converted to title case. And this will also work if we copy the lowercase into this and send the request again. Every time we do that, it's converted to title case. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And again, any suggestions for this Pydantic course as we build up to more complex topics, please leave them in the comments. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.